Welcome back to the channel Globe and our special series covering China's geography and economy, Perugian. This is going to be our last video of this series, which not only includes the mighty East China that contributes almost 40% of China's total GDP, but also talk about Taiwan, since some people were talking about this topic in the comments before. So I will share with you the history and facts about Taiwan and let you draw your own conclusion. Let's get started. East China includes Shanghai and seven diverse provinces that covers the east coastal area. It is the most populous region of China with more than 440 million population and contributes 40% of China's total GDP. At the heart of East China is Shanghai, China's financial center often referred by Chinese as the magic city. This 25 million people city contributed 663 billion US dollar GDP alone in 2022, equal to the entire economy of Poland. In the city center, you can walk along the Huangpu River on the Bund and enjoy the amazing skyline on both sides of the river. East side being the financial center with numerous skyscrapers, west side with the historical buildings of various European styles forming a splendid view. Despite being a relatively young city in China, you can also enjoy Chinese traditions in the City God's Temple, Yu Garden, Jibo Old Street, or Zhujiajiao Asian Town. As one of the most modern cities in China, it is also home to the second tallest building, the largest metro network, the busiest container port, the first commercial high-speed maglev in the world, and also the fastest train service in commercial operations. Unfortunately, not really successful, commercially speaking. Around Shanghai are two gigantic provinces, Jiangsu and Zhejiang ranked the second and fourth respectively in terms of GDP in China, each contributing 1.83 trillion and 1.15 trillion US dollar GDP. By high-speed train, one can reach Nanjing or Hangzhou from Shanghai within one hour. This region forming the most developed region in China and one of the three largest urban agglomerations in China. Within this area, one can also find the famous Asian water towns including Zhuang, Tongli in Jiangsu, Wuzhen and Xitang in Zhejiang, which are distinctive places where you can find typical Chinese features. As UNESCO World Heritage Sites, the classical gardens of Suzhou in Jiangsu province and Hangzhou West Lake are outstanding representatives of many tourist attractions in the Yangtze River Delta. Since ancient times, there has been the Chinese saying, 上有天堂, 下有苏杭, meaning above there is heaven, below there is Suzhou and Hangzhou demonstrating the region as the most prosperous in China. Talking about Jiangsu, already since ancient times, it has been economically prosperous, educationally developed, and culturally glorious, with a total of 13 national historical and cultural cities in the province. Today, Jiangsu only trails behind Guangdong as the second largest economy, and there is a trend that Jiangsu might surpass Guangdong in the coming years. Moreover, Jiangsu's per capita GDP is 40% higher than that of Guangdong, reaching 21.5 thousand US dollars in 2022. In general, the southern part of Jiangsu is more developed than the north. Its capital city, Nanjing, has been an Asian capital of six dynasties. As the capital during the Republic of China era, it has many important heritage sites, including the Presidential Palace and Sun Zhongshan Mausoleum. The Jiangnan Examination Center in Nanjing was the center of Asian Chinese culture education and was the largest and most influential examination center in Chinese history. Today, Nanjing is also home to two of the top 39 universities in China, with additionally 11 universities in the top 115 universities, or so-called 211 project. Although Nanjing boosts a variety of industries, it lacks a true pillar industry or a brand 
and recognized worldwide. Hence, despite being the capital of Jiangsu, Nanjing trails behind Suzhou in terms of GDP and population. Due to its strategic geographic location close to Shanghai, the cities of Suzhou, Wuxi, and Changzhou, often referred to collectively as Suxi Chang, have experienced significant economic growth and development. Suzhou's compound annual growth rate from 1981 to 2022 was at a staggering 9.5%. Its 350 billion US dollar GDP is composed of only 0.8% of the primary sector and 51.1% from the treasury sector. Today, the urbanization rate is above 80%, and the first time I drove into the CBD of Suzhou, I was pretty shocked because my impression of Suzhou is still that a Asian water town with classical gardens. Within Suzhou, Taichang, a county level city with around 840,000 population is considered hometown of German enterprises in China that attracted more than 460 German enterprises like Scheffler, Trump and Kern Liebers due to its strategic location. Now moving on to Zhejiang province, which consists mostly of hills for about 70% of its total area, hence many beautiful mountains and lakes can be found in the province, such as Morgan Mountain, Putuo Mountain, West Lake, and Qiandao Lake. The famous Longjing or Dragon Well Tea also comes from this fertile land, along with Jinghua Ham, Jiaxing Zongzi, Hangzhou Silk, Shaoxing Wine, and many local specialties. After the economic reform in the late 1970s, Zhejiang's economy experienced rapid growth led by its private sector. In 2022, there are 65 million people living in this province, contributing to 1.1 trillion US dollar GDP. Hangzhou, its capital city, is home to more than 12 million people, and companies like Alibaba, Jili, and NetEase. In recent years, it has been considered as China's e-commerce and technology center. Zhejiang is famous for its businessmen and trading activities amongst Chinese. Yiwu International Trade City is the world's largest small commodities market. As a permanent wholesale market, it is larger than most trade shows in the world, with over 71 billion US dollar trade volume in 2022 alone. Another city, Wenzhou, is famous for its entrepreneurship within many industries, such as footwear, clothing, and lighters. Wenzhou merchants are also well known due to their business and bold investments around the world, often referred to as the Jews of China. Shandong province is another heavyweight in China, with over 100 million population and 1.1 trillion US dollar GDP. It is the second most populous province and the third largest economy in China. It is famous for its agriculture sector, producing a variety of grains, fruits, and other agricultural products, especially the famous Yantai apples and Shouguang vegetables. In Shouguang alone, every year more than 4.5 million tons of vegetables are produced. Its capital city, Jinan, is called the City of Springs for its famous 72 artisan springs. Qingdao is the most populous and largest economy in Shandong as a former German colony. The city has various traces of German history. Its most famous brands include Qingdao beer, Haier, and Heisens. Weifang International Kite Festival has been held every year since 1984 in Weifang, the capital of kites in the world. Shandong Qufu is the birthplace of the greatest thinker Confucius and Confucianism, the most important Confucian school of thought in Asian China. Interesting enough, Shandong has served as a pivotal cultural and religious center for Taoism, Chinese Buddhism, and Confucianism. Shandong is also home to Mount Tai, the most famous mountain of the five great mountains in China. And Laoshan Mountain is a famous Taoist mountain. Anhui has long been a cradle of Chinese culture and history, with its captivating landscapes and profound heritage. With a population surpassing 60 million and a GDP nearing 670 billion USD in 2022, Anhui has grown significantly over the years. Hefei, its capital, has quickly emerged as a hub for technology and innovation due to its unique Hefei model 
Global, where local governments provide capital, land, and resources to private companies in return for a minority stake in these companies. Once these companies succeed, they will bring jobs, technology, and tax income in the long run. And if the company becomes extremely successful, the local government also profits from its share price, such as in the case of NIO. In recent years, Hefei government has been pretty successful in terms of their investments. Hence, some people joke in China that they have become the most successful investment bankers in China. Anhui is also home to one of China's most famous mountain, Mountain Huang, or Huangshan in Chinese. Huangshan has been a cultural holy land for literacy as well as a famous tourist attraction since ancient times. Unique Huangshan School of Painting, Huangshan School of Photography, and Huangshan School of Poetry have formed the specific culture. Not too far away from Mount Huang is Huizhou. Its unique culture is definitely worth visiting. Jiangxi province is another mid-sized province with 45 million population and over 470 billion US dollar total output. Nanchang, its capital city, boosts the highest GDP in the province with the second largest population. The Tenwang Pavilion, an iconic symbol of traditional Chinese architecture, stands tall here as the testament to the city's historical significance. At the heart of Jiangxi lies the Poyang Lake, China's largest freshwater lake, which not only serves as a vital waterway, but also as a sanctuary for migratory birds. Fujian province, located on the southeastern coast of China, with a population over 41 million, contributed more than 780 billion US dollar GDP in 2022. The province is known for its picturistic landscapes with a coastline that stretches over 3,000 kilometers, and a mountainous terrain that houses the famous Wei Mountains. Fujian is also the origin of the world-known Oolong tea and the birthplace of the Mingnan and Hakka cultures, which have spread across Southeast Asia. Fuzhou, the capital city of Fujian province, is a city steeped in history and rich in culture. When it comes to Fuzhou's culinary delights, it is the origin of Fuzhou fish balls, Buddha jumps over the wall, <laughs> lychee pork, and much more. Nice. Xiamen, a famous tourism city in Fujian, is often referred to as the Garden on the Sea due to its beautiful coastal scenery and well-preserved colonial architecture. As a special economic zone, Xiamen has seen rapid development and is a hub for trade and tourism. The city is also home to Gulangyu Island, a UNESCO World Heritage Site known for its car-free environment and historical buildings. Quanzhou is the largest city in Fujian in terms of population and the second largest in terms of GDP. It was also an ancient port city and a major starting point of the maritime Silk Road. Another highlight of Fujian is its unique Tulo or earth buildings. These grand fortress-like structures stand as silent witnesses to the resilience and tenacity of the Hakka people. If you want to know more about Hakka people and their Tulos, don't miss out on these two previous videos. Now, Fujian is also home to some famous brands within the automotive supply chain, namely CATL, the world's largest EV battery maker, and Fuyao Glass, the world's largest auto glass manufacturing company. Now, talking about the most controversial region, Taiwan. Let's start from a century ago. Since the civil war between the two sides, Kuomintang-led government and the Chinese Communist Party started in 1927 until 1936. Under the threat of the Japanese invaders, both forces somehow collaborated until 1945. But after the Japanese surrendered, the civil war continued. By 1949, the Chinese Communist Party won the civil war and founded People's Republic of China in Beijing while Jiang Jishi and approximately 2 million nationalist soldiers retreated to the island of Taiwan. Afterwards, there has been a long-standing political and military standoff between the two sides. Both sides wanted to take over the other side. Also, the international recognition of the two sides were split, 
but most countries begin to recognize the People's Republic of China over the Republic of China in the 1970s, including the United States in 1979. In 1971, People's Republic of China replaces the Republic of China as the representative of China in the United Nations and takes its permanent seat on the Security Council. In 1992, representatives from both sides held talks to address this ongoing issue, and both sides recognized the existence of one China, but they had different interpretations of what that meant. The mainland side believes that the People's Republic of China is the sole legitimate China, while the other side, under the Kuomintang's interpretation, believes that the Republic of China represents this one China. Hence, for decades, both sides have been able to trade and communicate under this ambiguous consensus and maintain the status quo. The current situation is even more complicated, as the 1992 consensus was signed by Kuomintang. But the Democratic Progressive Party that came into power twice in 2000 and 2016 is less close to mainland China. Nevertheless, today Taiwan is not recognized as an independent country by United Nations and only have full diplomatic relations with these 12 sovereign states. If you're interested, you're encouraged to read more about the history and relations through these three communicates between China and US, the 1992 consensus between People's Republic of China and Republic of China, as well as the agreements between Republic of China and US, in order to form your own opinion on the matter. Now, the relationship between the two sides is even more complicated, as Taiwan is not only a region with relatively high GDP per capita, over 32,000 US dollars, with total GDP reaching 760 billion US dollar GDP in 2022, but also a key player in the semiconductor industry, which is crucial in the tech war currently between China and US. So enough about politics, let's talk about the island itself with 23 million population. Taipei is the capital and it is a bustling metropolis known for its iconic Taipei 101, once the tallest building in the world. The city is a blend of modernity and tradition, where Asian temples stand side by side with towering skyscrapers. The island is also famous for its night markets, offering a pelora of delicious street foods from bubble tea to stinky tofu, from Taiwanese fried chicken to braised pork rice. The island's picturesque landscapes, such as the Taroko Gorge, Ali Shan, and Sun Moon Lake, attract tourists from China and all over the world. Now, moving on to the final region, we find ourselves amidst the three northwest provinces that historically formed Manzhou, Liaoning, Jilin, and Heilongjiang. Historically, this region has been the home to heavy industries in the last century, but unfortunately lost its charm during the last few decades, as it could not keep up with the other regions in China. Recently, the region has been trying to diversify its industries and increase trading with its neighbor Russia. Firstly, Liaoning, the southernmost of the three northeast provinces, is a blend of history, industry, and natural beauty. Its 42 million population contributed 430 billion US dollar GDP. Economically, Liaoning serves as a major industry base, with sectors such as equipment manufacturing, petrochemics, and metallurgy marking its prominence. Its vibrant capital, Shenyang, is a city that elegantly marries the old and new. The Shenyang Emperor Palace, reminiscent of Beijing's Forbidden City, is a testament to the region's rich Qing Dynasty history. BMW and its joint venture partner, Brilliance, runs the largest plant of BMW worldwide and contributed to 90% of the tax income of Shenyang. Dalian is Liaoning's second largest city with over 7 million population, but its 120 billion US dollar GDP ranks above the capital, Shenyang, and is often referred to as a pearl of the north. Dalian is renowned for its beautiful beaches and is also the largest port in northeast China. 
Then there is Jilin province, characterized by its natural landscapes like the Changbai Mountains and the Heaven Lake. The capital, Changchun, is often referred to as China's motor city for its significant automotive industry, being home to the first automobile works, which produced 3.2 million units in 2022. It is also one of the production bases for China's high-speed trains. But Jilin isn't just about industry. It's a celebration of the distinct Korean-Chinese culture, given its proximity to North Korea. Completing the trial is Heilong named after the majestic Heilong River, which forms a natural boundary with Russia. Heilongjiang's sprawling forests and agriculture, especially rice and soybean cultivation, play a crucial role in the economy. Harbin, its capital, is lovely dubbed the Ice City for its Grand Ice Festival, where entire structures are carved from ice, illuminating the winter nights. Due to its location, it is also well known for its historical Russian legacy and architecture. Harbin Institution of Technology is constantly ranked as one of the best universities in China and around the world for engineering subjects. So starting from the capital Beijing and ending at the most northern province Heilongjiang. And that's it for our special series about China's geography and economy. I hope you enjoyed it while have learned more about China. That is probably different than the news and not only the geopolitical hotspots, but rather the entire country and the real economy. If you have any comments, questions, or topics that you would like to discuss in our next videos, feel free to comment in the section below. Here at Gopen, we inspire learning, exchange, and business. Thank you so much for watching, and see you in the next video.